A big weekend at the bottom of the Premier League, including Everton's trip to Southampton. Cookie, what has the Saints gaffer Russell Martin had to say? Well, it's a massive weekend, isn't it, for a few teams down at the bottom. Wolves at home to Palace looking for their first win. Ipswich, of course, at home to Everton. I told uh, our producer earlier that I think Ipswich are doomed. That didn't go down very well in Southampton. Just one point so far. They take on Everton. I spoke to Russell Martin after they beat Stoke in the Cup in midweek and asked him just how big this game is. Yeah, they all are. They all are. So, yeah, it's, six, uh, it's an exciting game to get ready for. And now we, we've we been focusing on this one. And now we can analyse this, move on and get ready for Everton. Well, the lads weren't overly happy, I think, because they want... It was tougher than it could have been or should have been, probably. But um, I reminded them they've just won and they're allowed to smile and enjoy it and put some music on. So... I think, um, yeah, we'll make sure that the feeling and, of winning and the feeling of the performance and the pride they had on s- Saturday after the game is used in a positive way. There you go, Russell Martin looking ahead to Southampton against Everton. I'll be there alongside Perry Groves for, for game day live. How important is that, Benty, when you're part of a team that are out of the winning groove, that when you do get victories, albeit unconvincing, you, you enjoy it and you savour that moment and, and try and bottle it and move on to the next game? Yeah, it's really important just to get that kind of winning feeling. Because I think when you're a team that's been getting beat and get, you keep getting beat and you can't get results, that that can kind of creep in. But I think if you get that one result, um, not, I'm not saying it could change everything, but it certainly gives you something to hold on to and, and that winning feeling. But, I mean, Southampton taking on Everton. I can only see Everton winning this one. I, I really like Everton. And I do yeah, think from where they are in the league, I know they're, what are they, 16th? I think the Plaz have got, and I think they've been unfortunate cricket this year. You look at the Bournemouth one, that freak result. They go two up against Villa as well. I did think it was only going to be a matter of time before they got themselves and they do pull themselves away from that relegation zone because really they shouldn't really be there where they are. No, they're five unbeaten. And and I think when I was uh, in with Sam this morning for White and Jordan, I described Everton as more streetwise than Southampton. So I, I agree with you. I think if I had to if I had to place a bet, I would go for an Everton win as well. And you wonder where Southampton go from there because they've got Wolves away next before the international break. And you really feel like they need, what, four points from these two matches to give themselves a fighting chance even at this early stage of the season? Crooked, let me ask you a question because, listen, you're obviously the South Coast correspondent. Are Southampton 100% happy with Russell Martin? It, it depends who you talk to. I think the owner is concerned, uh, Dragon Solak, the money man, but I think he wants to be patient. He realised that Russell's got credit in the bank from taking them up from the championship last season, but... The Southampton fans, in my experience, are not the most patient and, and they can be a little bit fickle. So that there's quite a few Southampton fans who are already asking for a change of manager. But my question to them is, who's going to take the job and who's going to keep this squad in the Premier League if it isn't Russell Martin? Because I think there's the problem. They're just not good enough. In terms of Premier League quality, they mm-hmm. haven't got much. What about Rude Van Nistelrooy? <laughs> well, let's hope he's at Manchester United for a little mm-hmm. while longer in some capacity. Yeah, OK. Just just staying with this uh, this bottom of the table... Um, weekend because a massive game for as you said so many clubs you touched on Ipswich we joke about Ipswich on the show because producer Joe is of course a mad Ipswich fan and yeah. and Bentley played with him so I quite like winding them up but what I will say is Ipswich of course still without a win this is I would say a chance for them but you're playing a team in and around you in Leicester they're at home as well if Leicester if Ipswich sorry don't win this game <clears throat> I don't know where their first win of the season comes from no, I agree, because actually your producer's been winding me up about beating United in the first game back after the international yeah, that break. Won't be I would, well, I would suggest the fact that Ruben Amarim will be in the dugout for the first time makes that a, a really difficult task. But the, the data doesn't make great reading for Ipswich. They're, they're low, they're low in, in terms of expected goals. They're low in terms of the, the, the number of shots they face in terms of giving the opposition chances. So I don't think they're in a false position. They spent a lot of money in the summer but they gambled on a lot of players unproven in the Premier League. And, and like Southampton, I think the harsh reality is that the team's not good enough. I'd be I'd be amazed if they stayed up. It wouldn't surprise me as we sit here now, because I think Leicester are poor as well, if, if history repeats and all three promoted teams go down. Yeah. Uh, my producer, Joe, just said, we better move on now. I'll be the judge of when we move on, Joe. Let's move on. Uh, right, we could talk about, well, the other end of the table now, Liverpool against Brian Crookie. Who have you been chatting to? Yeah, Liverpool, uh, good point for them away from home against Arsenal last weekend. I was there at the Emirates. They were really good in the second half, I thought, in particular. Virgil van Dijk among the goals. Still, we don't know if he's going to sign a new contract. So I'll put it to Arna Slot. Are you enjoying him while he's here? I hope all the players I work with now that they are uh, that, 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 that we keep them because they do really well. And I'm not talking about years to come. I'm just hoping that they are available for the upcoming weeks and months because they are they are 
all doing really well and Virgil is one of them. So um, as long as he keeps these performances up, I've, I ho of course, I hope that he's uh, available for me for as long as possible. That was a brilliant way of dodging the question mm. because what I actually asked him was, are you hoping Virgil van Dijk will be here for many years to come? And he didn't really uh, commit to that. Obviously, van Dijk's contract is, is an issue. So too Trent Alexander-Arnold and Mo Salah. And it's unusual, isn't it, for a top club like Liverpool to get to the stage where three of their best players, three of their most important players, are all running down their contracts. Cricket, do you think we can get to a situation where none of them sign, or do you expect? Oh my goodness! Or do you expect one of them? Because I, I can't see them all going. I mean, the one that I think is in the 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 one I would keep hold of the most right now would be Virgil, but I think long term it's Trent because he's just Liverpool through and through. So, can you see a, a situation where they lose all of them? I don't think so. Um, my hunch is that, that Virgil van Dijk will re-sign because I think he's so important for the dressing room and obviously is still one of the top defenders in the league. I kind of feel like Mo Salah will as well, but he's got a decision to make. Does he want to go and make a, a shed load of cash in Saudi Arabia or does he stay and really cement himself as that Liverpool legend? The one that I would be most worried about losing if I was a Liverpool fan, I think would be Trent Alexander-Arnold because we know that Real Madrid are keen, so too are Barcelona and Bayern. And I wonder if his friendship... His bromance with Jude Bellingham is going to play a big part in his decision. Yeah. Quickly, before we let you go, we should uh, finish with uh, the biggest game of the weekend, Man United on Sunday. They welcome Chelsea to Old Trafford. Ruud van Nistelrooy, of course, still in charge. What's he had to say, Quickly? Yeah, Ruben Amorim uh, confirmed as manager today, a contract till 2027 with a year's option. We know he won't be in charge this side of the international break. What does that mean for Ruud van Nistelrooy? Well, he was asked today at uh, the pre Chelsea press conference what his future holds. I decided to come back here for, for a very important reason, that I'm here. And as, as an assistant, I, I came here to help the club forward. And I'm, I'm still very motivated to do so in any capacity. And um, as an assistant and now as an, as an interim manager, and after that I go back to my assistant contract um, that I have here um, for this season and next. And I'm, 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 yeah, I'm very motivated to to stay here and help the club forward. That's my absolute goal. There you go, Ruud van Nistelrooy there clearly wants to stay at United. I'll tell you what, for those of you watching on YouTube, he looks the part, doesn't he, with that, uh, that roll neck. Looks like the milk tray man and he enjoyed it the other night. Showed a lot of passion on the touchline. I think it would be a shame if they can't find a role for him, but we know that Ruben Amorim is, is bringing five of his own backroom team, including a couple of assistants. And I've got to say, Andy, I've reached out to sources at United a couple of times and, and asked for some guarantees for Ruben and, and so far they've not been forthcoming. Mm. But that's the thing, and I, I get it, for, for Ruben Amarim to, to succeed and I fully understand, listen, Van Nistelrooy is a United legend. Obviously he's got aspirations of being a manager. I just think if you want to give the best guy the best opportunity of succeeding at Manchester United, he's got to feel comfortable in his surroundings and unfortunately if that means Ruben has to go, then he has to go quickly, yeah, I, I guess. I, th I think it'll be a shame because he's not been there very long. He, he had the opportunity potentially to go and manage Burnley, turn that down to be a number two at Old Trafford. I think you can see what the football club means to him. I, I think you need as many people like that around as possible. And he just seems like the type of guy who is going to be willing to, to work for a new manager and, and help guide him through. I think you need to tap into that experience. Talk Sport Drive with Andy Goldstein. Monday to Friday afternoon from 4 on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.